Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Topaz Labs updated Sharpen AI to version 4. Now, usually these whole number updates are rather significant. And in today's video, we're going to see if in fact that is true. This is a screenshot of part of an email I received from Topaz Labs where they mention what is new in this version 4.0. They have now native Apple M1 support. They have a new AI model. They're calling it the standard AI model. And they have a redesigned UI, improved usability, and of course, they claim they fixed a lot of bugs. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to a web page on their website where they talk about in detail what is new, improved, and fixed in this version of Sharpen AI. Now you could use Sharpen AI as a standalone app, or you could use it as a plugin in Lightroom and Photoshop. Today, we're going to use it as a Lightroom plugin, and we're going to be working on this image here. You can see that this image is very, very blurry. I totally missed focus on this image. So we're going to use it as a Lightroom plugin. I'm going to right click right on the image, go down to edit in and then over to Topaz Sharpen AI. Now, if you use Sharpen AI as a standalone app, it will work on raw files directly. But if you use it as a Lightroom plugin, Lightroom has a limitation. Lightroom will not allow you to send a raw file to any plugin, including Sharpen AI. So you'll have to send it as either a JPEG, PSD, or TIFF file. Topaz Labs recommends a TIFF file. Now this is a raw file in Lightroom, so I have to send a copy and I'll send it as the recommended TIFF Profoto RGB, 16 bits per component, resolution of 300 and no compression. Now I'll click edit. Now you'll see in the top left-hand corner, there's a progress bar. Lightroom is creating this TIFF file with those specifications and it's sending it over directly into Sharpen AI. And you can see in the lower left-hand corner, there's a blue uh, progress bar. It said updating and you can see it's done. And it did a great job, just really not doing anything. I just sending it over there. And I'll click right on the image and I'll get a before after. There's before and there's after. There's before, there's after. Now those of you that have watched my videos know that when Sharpen AI first came out a couple years ago, I did a video panning it. I thought it was junk. I didn't think it worked very well at all. Well, it's come a long way, and now it is one of the apps I go to when I have soft images like this one. And you can see, I mean, it really did a great job. Now, it has a lot of different features, though. I mean, I just loaded this image in here, and it fixed it, right? But you could do this a little more manually if you want to. Over on the right-hand side, it has a lot of different models, but it picked the Sharpen model or I'm sorry, it picked the motion blur, very blurry model automatically because I have auto on. When you have auto on, what it will do is it will examine the image and determine which of the models it thinks will work best. And it will automatically apply it. And then you could just, you know, keep it or leave it. Now, if you want to use a different model, what you'll need to do is turn this off. And when you do, you'll see all the models are right here. This standard model is the new model. But these other ones have been here a while. They have three different motion blur models, three different out of focus models, and three different two soft models. And um, you could see, you could just like actually just click on them. And then in the lower left hand corner, you'll have to wait for it to render. And once it renders, you could get an idea if that model looks any good. And the standard model looks pretty good. Now, one other factor is you have different um, parameters here. You have blur type, is it motion blur or lens blur? Uh, you have the ability to increase or decrease sharpening, decrease or increase noise suppression, and the ability to remove artifacts by moving this slider as well. Now, also there's an auto setting for this. If you just have it on auto, it again will determine which blur type and 
the value for these sliders are optimum for the image you're working on. So you could have this really very kind of automatic. Just turn auto on here, have auto on here, let it update, and then you're done. And you could see it really kind of knew what it was doing. It did a good job. But again, if you want to, you know, see if you could do a little better, um, turn this off, go through the different models one by one. And by the way, when you first use Sharpen AI, it will have to download these models as you click on them. And each download for me, and I have relatively fast internet, uh, took like 30 seconds. I think my internet's like 200 megabits, of whatever it is, the 200 level. Uh, so it's pretty fast. And it still took around 20 to 30 seconds for each of these. Some are larger than others. And you'll click on it and you'll see a bar come across saying it's downloading it. Right now, you have to wait for it to update, of course. And you can see this one isn't as good as standard. And let's go to motion blur, very noisy. If you had noise in here and you could see it's let that update. And that one's a little better than the previous one, but probably not as good as standard and so on. So you could click through all of these. And also you could come in and just manually move the sliders if you feel the need to. Um, and try it that way. Again, you have to always wait for it to update. So always be looking over in the left-hand side at this, um, this progress bar and see how it's doing. Now, you may have some that are really close to one another and you may want to compare them to each other. And you're able to do that. If you go up here to the top, you have these different view modes. Right now we're in the single view mode. You could have this split view mode and this will just give you a before after with the slider. So this still, you can't compare them to each other. You're just looking at a single one. If you want to compare one you're working on to the original image without any sharpening done to it, you'd use the side-by-side -side view. You'll have the original on the left and you'll have the improved image on the right. But if you want to compare them to one another, you'll need to use comparison view. Here in comparison view, you could look at four different models at the same time. Now, of course, there's much more than four, right? There's 10 models, but you're able to look at four of them and you could compare them to each other. In the top left-hand corner, we have motion blur normal. Next to that, we have, excuse me, too soft, very blurry. In the lower left-hand corner, we have out of focus normal. And in the uh, lower right, we have too soft normal. Um, so you could just change these out. Just make one active. Let's say I want to uh, flip out. Looks like out of focus normal is the worst. So I want to flip that one out with standard. Just make that active, then click on standard. And you'll see that it will exchange that with the standard model. And you can see the standard model is better. So you can kind of narrow it down uh, to see which one of these are better. What I recommend you do when you do this, make sure all of the models are on, model parameters are on auto so that you're comparing apples to apples. That way you could better determine which one is better when it's on auto. Then you could come into the model parameters and you could tweak it from that point forward. Now what I'm going to do for this image is I'm going to go to single view and I'm gonna keep it on auto so it's, take, it's picking motion blur very blurry. That looks pretty good. Um, then what I would do is once I determine either this way by using auto or by using comparison view and picking the one I feel is best. Then I'll come down to model parameters and I'll move these sliders to try to tweak it to make it a little better. And remember, you have to wait for it to render each time. Also, if you just move the image by dragging it around, now I'm looking at the entire image now, but let's say I was uh, zoomed in to 200%. I have to wait for it to render. Then if I move the image by dragging it around, you're going to again have to wait for it to render. So there is that kind of um, lag <laughs> when you do it. You know, you always have to wait for it to render. Now in this case, I think it's just a little bit too sharp, but I'd back it off or I'd go to auto. And if I see noise, I could suppress noise a little more by moving this slider. Now, it has masking because quite often you want your subject to be sharp but you don't want to sharpen the background. So, you know, so what you could do is right here, this is masking right here where it says select, just turn it on. And what it will do is it will try to automatically find the subject and it will show you the mask. And it did a great job. It found the, the bird perfectly. And it, wherever it's white, that's where it is um, 
applying the sharpening and wherever it is black that's where it's not applying any sharpening. I have it set to auto subject. Now I could refine it if I click on refine and you could see you could add to the mask or subtract from the mask with these two brushes here. In this case here I'm just going to leave it the way it is. You could clear it, start over, things like that, but I think it did a fine job as it is, so I don't need to do any of that. You want to remove the mask, go down to the very bottom and just click right here and you could turn that red overlay off. If you want to delete it entirely, the whole image, start over, click the trash can. I like it the way it is. Now, sometimes with some images, if you add a bit of grain to it, it'll make it look a little sharper. So you have the option of doing that here with this add grain slider. Usually I don't have to do that. So I think this image using the auto model, which it picked motion blur very blurry, and using auto parameters, and using the object subject mask, I'm sorry, I think it looks great. There's before and there's after. So I'm just going to click apply. Now because I've used it as a Lightroom plugin, it's just going to save the image and open it back up into Lightroom. And if you use this as a standalone app, it will give you the option of saving it. And you could save it as a JPEG or a TIFF, a PSD, or I believe you could save it as a RAW file as well. So you're never going to touch the original RAW file it will save it as a new raw file. So here's the original image and here is our sharpened image. And why don't we zoom in a little bit? I'm gonna to go to view though and I'm going to lock my zoom position and I'm going to hold the command key in on my Mac. It's a control key on a PC. And let's like zoom into the bird's face. So here's the after, there's the before, after, before, after. I think you'll agree it did a pretty good job. So remember in the description below this video I'll have a link to that web page where they talk about exactly what is new, improved, and fixed in this version of the software. I also have a discount code if you're interested in purchasing it. I'll have my affiliate link there. You could uh, check it out. They have a um, fully working free trial you could take advantage of as well. Thank you. Everyone who watches my videos, I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.